Hello heroes, I'm Andrew Lysium and this is Mountain Blade Warband with the Floris mod pack. Specifically the Floris Expanded mod pack. Um, now I want to ask your opinions, you sort of gave a, a wide variety of answers. Uh, and like, a lot of you said War, War, uh, Mountain Blade and uh, an equal number said XCOM and then ever so slightly, slightly smaller number said Dwarf Fortress. So in the end I went with uh, Warband just because there's quite a few XCOM videos out there and I don't think that many people know about Warband and it's pretty awesome and especially since there's a Mountain, War and, uh, Mountain Blade 2 coming out and which is odd because Warband is basically Mountain Blade 2 so Mountain Blade 2 is going to be Mountain Blade 3 but anyway. So uh, what is it? It's a RPG action thing where you can get other heroes and stuff to follow you and you can get a horde of troops and you run around and you do the hacking and the slashing and stuff. Uh, I've got all the options set to basically like uh, normal damage and stuff, not you know reduced because uh, we're going to play this relatively realistically. Uh, Lance is on basically the medium setting and automatic blocking directions. Uh, now, the battle size, I've got this 401. I think that's not a default. I think I had to change that using uh, a little program you can download from the uh, the forums for the game. Um, which is also where you can get the, map, the uh, Floris mod pack for Mountain Blade, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the game itself is a bit frustrating and annoying, and there's some mechanics that really need fixing. It's a bit of an old game, like what, like four years old or so? I don't know. But um, the modern community have fixed all the annoying bugs and they've expanded on several things, like I don't know why anyone would play it unmodded. It, it's fun unmodded, that's how I got into it, but the mods are ridiculously awesome. They, they, that's what's kept me in the game. Anyway, I've rambled for like two and a bit minutes now, so let's start a new game. You hear about Calradia, the land tomb whom rival sovereignty is battling each other for supremacy, a haven for knights and mercenaries, cutthroats and adventurers, all willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power, or glory. In this land, which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you believe you may. You believe you may leave your past behind. That's just an annoying sentence to say, and start a new life. You feel that finally you hold the key of your destiny. The key to your destiny. The key of your destiny. Should be the key to your destiny. Surely. Free to choose as you will, and whatever course you take, great adventures will await you. Oh yeah, they will. So right, we're going to use... This screen is also uh, modded. Like, it's amazing. Uh, expanded troop tree. We'll start off in Swadia. There's like uh, six factions. There's the Sari Sultanate, which is sort of... Um, light armor. It's sort of... Uh, I don't know, I guess the theme is sort of Middle Eastern circa Alexander the Great. Road at Republic, that's more like Italian city-states in like the 15th century. Um, they like crossbows and they're pretty poor at cavalry. Uh, they have no cavalry in the vanilla game, but they have a little bit of cavalry just to actually, you know, balance them in the expanded troop tree, I think. Nords, uh, same for the cavalry as the uh, Rodox, but they like... Uh, they're basically the Vikings. They're pretty much that. They're really annoying in a siege if you're trying to attack them because they just chuck axes down at you uh, and they're throwing axes to do so much damage. And like, oh, they've got a short range. Well, yeah, but you have to go up the bloody ladder to get to them and then you're just a sitting duck and you have to get short range. They're just, oh, they're the most ridiculously annoying army to siege ever. The Kurgit Garnet. Uh, I think they're, they're the guys basically who live on horses all the time. I think sort of Semi Dothraki from Game of Thrones mixed with uh, any of the, the the steppe tribes and so on. Like, um. A bit like Genghis Khan. Hence the Khanate. Oh, I should have said that first. Uh, the Vegas. I have no idea how to describe them. They're quite powerful overall. Uh, they've got good archery, good cavalry, and good armor. Swadia! Uh, they've got the longbowmen of uh, of medieval Britain, and they've got a cavalry predilection like early medieval Britain, except their cavalry are like high medieval, late medieval. So they've got a lot of barding and 
flapping colours and they're a little bit... They're not necessarily OP because they do still get owned in the game occasionally, but they're just annoying to fight because rather than lining up and having a nice infantry thing uh, in a battle with like some cavalry flanking and stuff, since they, like especially their higher level guys, tend to just run entire cavalry armies, you just end up in a brawl and it's just a maelstrom rather than actually having any real tactical fun. So it's kind of annoying to fight them. Now for a couple of reasons I think we're going to start there. Partly because if we start with them we won't have to fight them. Uh, and secondly because they're the default starting position for most players anyway. So if you want to get into this game it'd be good to be able to do you know. You go, oh well I know this place. Uh, Entry Lysium was playing it on this game. Anyway, uh, you can be male or female and no it doesn't make bug roll difference. It actually does make quite a big difference. If you're a female, the game is sexist. Not in a bad way, in a way that it's relatively medievally realistic. They're like, <laughs> women can't fight. And you can go ahead and then beat their asses and just prove them wrong. But you will have a harder time. Now, I'm tempted to play a female character because I haven't played one in a very long time on this game. But we're going to play male for, actually play male for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it'll take ages to get into the... Uh, later stages of the game where you can actually have, you know, influence and you can be doing all this cool stuff and in command if you play as a woman because people will be like, <laughs> you're a woman, you can't do anything, get back to the kitchen. Are you, like, you can do stuff, you can you can do everything the guys can do, but persuading the other characters that you can, that's the difficult part. Uh, and frankly, I don't want to be sitting at the very beginning of the game trying to persuade characters for a very long time because it's kind of boring to watch. And secondly, because male's the default, uh, we're going to stick with that because, you know, you can you can see a default play. Uh, now, this is where it gets fun. We can choose our stats basically by choosing uh, beginning things. Now, if we start as non-profit noble, we can basically get into being a, a noble quicker and actually have more renown. And the more renown we have, the more things we'll be trusted with and the better like known we are in our legend. Uh, so we'll start off our father's a veteran warrior. But maybe he got like a load of money from somewhere. Yeah, he did well, something got rewarded by a liege lord or something. And, you know, he set himself up a little little bit of a bit of land, and you know, I got to be a noble in training. I later became What are the options? Mercenary or Bravo? Mercenary only gives us plus one riding and we really want the plus two. We also get a bit of horse archery, not that I really mind that horse archery. Uh, I kind of suck at it. It's really good if you can perfect it though. It's really difficult to perfect and it's pretty badass. Um, so yeah, Bravo basically uh, the cell sword. A traveling cell sword rather than the mercenary who's just you know, part of an outfit maybe. Now, uh, the reason for an adventure. Sense of duty will give us plus one leadership. Personal revenge will give us power strike. Loss of a loved one gives us iron flesh, so that's more health. Religious fervor. How do we get wound treatment? Uh, lust of money and power. Oh, we get looting. Oh, point in looting isn't bad. I think we're going to go with being forced out of our home, basically because it's thematic. Basically, we imagine that our father was a noble warrior. He got some money and some land for doing wealth in uh, uh, in service of one of the lords. And then we became a noble in training because of that. But then we got forced out of our home after maybe his liege lord turned on him or his liege died off and uh, got replaced or something. And for whatever reason, uh, basically he got pushed out because he's a commoner. And they were like, oh, actually, you know, someone was wrong to promote you. We don't want commoners around here. So we had to sort of resort to becoming a Bravo and selling our, our services. Not in that way. Uh, basically to make ends meet. So it's kind of nice and thematic. Uh, we get nine strength, six agility. Six agility is great, but we'll boost that with the points we get. Spine flesh, power strike, blah, 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 blah. 
spotting, which is nice, and we get good four leadership. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, we could play a fourth war. Should we? I think we won't bother just so, you know, we just see what's going on. We could gather companions, which makes it means they can all start in the one location, but I think it's better to have them dispersed. Just because, it, you know, it's kind of more sensible. And we're going to play iron, uh, iron mode, so realistic, no quitting without saving. And we shall be Mal. Oh, Malov. Malov Elise. Uh, put agility up to nine. Why nines? Why, why, why do we want the nines? Well, if you look up in the top, up here, when I highlight it, basically we got a... These are capped by these skills, so your skills are capped by your attributes. And every time you go up a multiple of three in your attribute, you can go up a level in the skills. So, generally, we want to try and be chopping them. Um, now we could go up in intelligence, but I don't think we want to expand any intelligence. So we'll go up with Kiris for now, we can make a decision later. Uh, important skills. Prisoner management. Uh, you can ransom prisoners back for money when you capture them. Uh, really important early game, it's good by making money. So we'll definitely want to point in that, because otherwise you can't have any prisoners whatsoever. Um, what else do we want? The next point in writing will be tempting. One point in foraging. This skill's not in the base game, but it's amazing. Amazing skill. Basically, it makes it slightly more realistic. Instead of carrying a bunch of food around with you, you can forage a little bit off the land. You need to still carry provisions around with you to make up the supplement. Like, there is a, a surplus that you uh, need to be making up with that, but it helps to subsidize you by foraging off the land. Which is pseudo realistic. Which is basically what this entire game is. Um, pathfinding. Increasing my movement speed on the map. Really important for catching uh, people who are running away. I could boost trade, but uh, it's a party skill. Important things like where it says leader skill, you can't boost that without having to boost your main character. Some of the skills can be boosted by having people in your squad. So prison management has to be you. Persuasion is a personal skill. That's to be you. Leader skill, inventory management, that's a pain. Uh, that's something we'll expand later, probably. the running skill. I think with this four we'll get one in wound treatment, one in surgery. Surgery basically means that uh, there's a 4% uh, chance for extra level that someone who's dead will actually only be wounded and wound treatment increases uh, heal speed by 20%. Now these are party skills and ideally you'll get like a companion hero who will uh, basically subsidize these skills, especially stuff like Engineer. I think there's like Artemir or Artimer or someone. Uh, he's like a brilliant engineer. And there's this noble woman nurse person who does uh, a good job for being basically a, a healer. Because, you know, she's a nurse. Um, what we'll spend the last two on? Uh, we'll expand our inventory by one. And we'll take an extra point in looting. Looting is very useful. Maybe not at the very beginning, but as soon as you start raiding villages and stuff. If you decide to go that route. Now I think we're going to go crossbows because they're pretty cool. We could go normal bows, but crossbows do a lot more damage. They're harder to use from horseback. So we'll have to think and see what we go with, really, but they are, they are useful. Um, and we'll go with, I think, a mix of two and one-handed. We'll probably go two-handed as soon as we can, because that way we can use uh, two-handed from a horse. And you want a nice long blade to be able to whack people from a horse. Uh, lances are a common one, but lances, like, it's just a bit... I don't find them as fun because you just end up skirting the battlefield, hit someone with a lance, wait for it to resurrect or something. Basically, when you hit someone with your lance, your lance goes up and you have to wait for the recharge time for the lance to be able to come down again, which stops them just from being OP and just plowing through people. In real life, of course, your lance would break and you'd 
chuck it away. Uh, now, throwing weapons I've never really done, mainly because you get really low ammo. Um, but that is a legit option, but you know, it, it makes you a bit of a glass cannon. You run in, you chuck your axes, and then you're like, ah, now what do I do? You get a lot more ammo with uh, bows, so I think we'll boost our two handed. And. The options, the options, the options. Yes, and we need a glorious moustache. There we go. Hello, Malavalese. And your hair colour... Ginger, a lightish brown. It can make you old, it can make you young. Well, you've only just come away from being a Bravo, so relatively young. I mean, that's the bottom of the age slider, but to be honest, you still look like, I don't know, late, uh, early 40s. Uh, we could play with these sliders, but I really can't be bothered. Let's call that done. You came by caravan through the heartland of color out here. Green shoots of wheat, barley, and oats are beginning to plow from the dark soil of the rolling hills. And on the lower slopes of the snow-capped mountains, herds of cattle and sheep are grazing on the spring grass. Occasionally, too, you can catch sight of one of the great wolves instead of the pride of the Swadian nobility. The land here is rich, but also troubled, as the occasional burnt-out farm bears witness. You keep a wide berth for the forest where desperate men have taken refuge and it is some relief when you crest a ridge and catch sight of the great port of Praven. Praven, 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 I don't know which. Its rooftops made golden by the last rays of the setting sun. Uh, we go to an inn, we fall asleep, we wake up, we're like, oh, well, what should we do? Uh, we go outside, have a little wander around. It's like, I don't know, 5am or something. It's just light, stupid time in the morning. And, oh, we hear the rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. So, right, let's do this. Someone's trying to mug us. Yeah! Oh, that was a good hit. Yeah, so you can control the direction of your attacks in this game. Uh, ooh, let's try and... There we go. You can do stabs and you can do slashes. And of course, here the maces doing bashing damage. Oh, Rick Fugger! Are you alright? Well, I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure that we can say the same for the other fellow. That's one less thief to trouble our streets at night, although heaven knows he won't be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me or something. Let's talk more inside. Out here, we don't know who's listening. Uh, yeah, cool. 5am. I don't mind being propositioned. Mm. The merchant takes you to his house. Once inside, he stands by the door for a while, checking the streets, and then, finally convinced you have not been followed, comes near you to speak. And by coming near me to speak, he is standing at the other side of the room. Uh, okay, I'll come near you to speak then. Now, let me explain my proposition. We've always had brigands in the hills, driven by banditry to war, dead, or love of violence. Recently, however, they've been getting bolder. 
leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town looking for unwary prey. The watch commander tells us all it's all because of all the fighting on the frontier. Few men to keep an eye on the streets, but I'm not sure what to make of that. It seems to me that the most logical explanation is these bandits have an ally inside the walls. Who helps them entering unnoticed and helps them identify particularly tempting targets. Last week, you see, they took my brother. I don't know what my brother was thinking. A lad from a prominent house, and out alone after dark in times like these. Well, I suppose you were too, but you're a stranger here and didn't know how bad things have become. He had no such excuse. But he's family, so what can you do? If you don't protect your kin, then people will start thinking you can't protect your investments either. And I can't with that. No doubt the gang will soon send word about a ransom, but I don't care to pet. You can tell he really cares about his brother. So here's my proposition. You look like you've had a bit of an experience with a blade. A bit of experience, a bit of experience, not a bit of an experience. And more importantly, you must have a bit of fire in your belly, or you wouldn't be coming to Colorado to seek your fortune. Well, I've got big mouth, I think the sales coming in to seek my fortune, did I? Whoopsie. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Gather a small party, track down these bandits to their lair, teach them a safe lesson, teach them a lesson they won't forget, and get my brother back safe. In return, you'll earn my lasting gratitude and a bit of silver. What do you say? He offers us money. Meh. Yeah. It's not like we've got anything else going. I've said it, yeah. I am interested. You won't be able to do this yourself single handedly. Uh, here's a hundred dinars. Dinars are money. They're like denarii, like, which is what the Romans used, I think. Um, he gives money. He wants us to go get people. Uh, we need at least five men to take on the bandits. Blah, blah, blah. Yay! I say, very good, sir. I'll collect some men from around the villages. Good, you can find me again in the tavern here. Drunk. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's go. Right. So, this is Praven. Praven, Praven. This is the world. Rodox, which is the Italian crossbow people. Nords, the Viking people. Vegas, who. I don't know, they're semi OP in my opinion. Um, annoying horse people who are just a pain to fight because you have to try and catch them. Lightly armored Egyptian y, Middle Eastern y people who I pick on because. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's go to this village. Yes. Also, let's check our inventory. We have iron and a cabbage. What cabbages? 50 cabbages. Well, cabbages equating to 50 units of food. And we're wearing a coif, gamson, some wooden clothes. We can sell the iron if we find a good price for it. That'll give us some nice starting cash. Recruit volunteers. Two. That's a good start. Um, go to Gissim. Gissim? Uh, 7.4 speed now. Goes down because we've got a horse and these guys don't. Uh, oh crap, stay away from the looters. I'd happily take them on if we had a few more guys. Oh, balls. Uh, oh, he doesn't want to fight me. He sees me as too inferior. Wow. Wow. They really, uh... Really need to get some... Get their act together. There's a lot of, uh, randomers running around here. Now, like, looters and bandits and stuff aren't nearly as dangerous as uh, deserters, because deserters are like military units at any level. And they're annoying as... Well, really annoying. Um, uh, apparently there is a tournament in tier. We'll get owned in a tournament we go to at the moment, so let's just skip. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, ooh, there's a battle up there. If we get here, get some troops, we might be able to join the battle really quick. I know we're underleveled, but if we join the battle, we might be able to get some goodwill and some loot. It's dark, so I don't know if the battle's still going on. Yes. Yeah, there's only like three left. Let's move in to help the, uh, the actual real dude who's winning. Uh, he's. Well, yeah, we've got like 65 against the enemy 3. 
Uh, plan your battle with the enemy. Infantry will hold position. Stand closer, stand closer. And we'll form ranks. Dispatch orders. Enough planning to battle. Now all of that came with the uh, Floris mod pack. And look, look at all these guys. Look, don't they look professional? Uh, that symbol over their head, that's not mine. It, this one's my symbol since I don't have a actual symbol at the moment for my group. Uh, I'm going to leave them there because otherwise they'll probably get them stuck. Uh, they probably need to... Movement orders, follow me. They need the experience. I'll try and not get them killed. Now, Sea Raiders are like the most annoying type of bandit. In vanilla, way more than anything else, they're incredibly annoying. Because basically, they have male armor and bows and they're skilled. Uh, they're, they're pretty OP. I think that under the deep out a little bit in this. I haven't hit him yet. Ooh, look at the pretty sky. Ah, uh, we won! Yeah! I totally helped. Ah, uh, none of us took any casualties. Good to see you here, man of the leaves. Ha! We showed this fast as a thing or two, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did. Cool. Uh, he likes me slightly... Oh, he, he dislikes me slightly less. Uh, oh, let's go to Iprian. Uh, oh, a fuckload of forest bandits are following us. Uh, we still can't really take them on. We've got 11 guys and they're actually proper bandits. Hello, Count Bespin. Bespin. Fourteen guys. That's plenty. We just go to Elinda. 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 Okay. I don't own enough money. Okay. Let's go to Praven. Praven, 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 Praven. Uh, Praven. Maybe we'll sell the iron if we can get a decent price, and then we'll go find the guy in the tavern, and... yeah. Join the tournament! Oops, I didn't mean to hit that. Let's just withdraw. Because, you know, we're never going to win that. We'll never be able to join the feast, we're too lowly ranked. Um, let's go to the marketplace. How much is... Ah, oh, that's a decent price, we'll sell that. Um, anything at all reasonably priced. A long sword, which is one or two handed. Still out of our range in terms of price, so let's just go to the goods merchant. And what have you got in the way? You've got some bread, which is plus eight to party morale. Some cheap grain. We'll have that. And have you got anything else that's reasonably priced? I can't remember what's reasonably priced these days. Um, I would call that it. And let's go to the tavern. Ransom Broker, we don't have any prisoners. Hello, would you be so kind as to have a cup of oh, no, that's, that's not me, that's someone else. Um. Hello, would you be so kind as to have a cup of tea with me? I'm down to my last five dinars and I'd rather not drink alone. I say, your last five dinars, what happened to you? It's a tragic tale, sir. A while back I left the Garoria with a caravan of goods. 
I was going to sell it all in Sargop and make the hefty sum. But what you know, we are ambushed by a party of Karak Raiders who rode away with most of the horse and goods. And two days later, my own caravan guards ran away with the rest of what I had. So here I am, no money and no way home. Well, perhaps I could offer you work. Can you fight? Well, I will confess that I'm not a warrior by trade. But I'm a fast learner. I can ride and know a fair bit about trade prices and such. Yeah, that will do. Good, give me a few moments to prepare. And I'll be Basically, we have ourselves a companion. Uh, we didn't pay any money for him, which means he's crap. And I actually know this guy. Uh, he's, as he said, a trader. And that's about it. But, you know, free help. Hello, Ulrich Fugger. Splendid work, you have hired enough men to take on the bandits. Now, travelers entering Craven have told us that there is a small group of robbers lurking on the outside of the town. I suspect that they are all from the same band, the one that took my brother. Hunt them down and defeat them and make them disclose the location of the lair. Very well, I shall hunt for bandits. Uh, we could get some mercenaries, but honestly, they're expensive, and the maintenance is expensive. Hello, tavern keeper. I can't buy. I can't buy uh, jobs. Uh, embassy. I guess it's shitty. Okay, let's go. Ah, right. To the town center, or we could just press tab. Uh, let's leave. And band of robbers. Hello. What do you want? I've been looking for you. Tell me where you keep your prisons and I'll let you go. Ha! <laughs> this prisoner only going free if you pay that ransom. Did you bring any silver? Uh, no, but I did bring steel. Uh, we outnumber them like almost four to one. Um, annual battle. <coughs> stand close, stand close. Ranks, dispatch orders to battle. Ooh, yes. We're starting on a hill. Uh, guys, don't go down the hill. No, please, we want the advantage of the hill. Oh well, you're going to be stuck in there then. Uh, now, since we actually have a horse and a bow, and we know that the enemy are looters, they probably have the horses, we can do this. Oh, hi there! We suck. Run him over. Why are you not pointing in the right direction? Ah, well, at least we got a shot. An arrow to the knee. No, I do not want to hear all the arrow to the knee jokes again. I would like some experience. I don't mind if the troops get some though, they kind of need it. No arrow to the knee. No arrow to the knee. We win! Yes! We are victorious! Uh, two killed, one wounded, one wounded. I killed one, personally. I spare me! Spare my life! 
Let me go and I'll go far away from here and I'll, I'll learn an honest trade and you'll never hear from me again. Yeah, you're going to go right back to being an addict. We know that. I'll spare your life, but in exchange, I want information. Either you or your mates kidnapped the brother of a prominent merchant in town. Tell me where you're hiding him, and give me your word that he will stop troubling the people of these parts, and you can go free out of town. Hey, bless you, sir. Bless you. We've done the lad no harm. We've been keeping him in a hideout near Asgard. I'll describe the area in detail so there's no mistaking it. And we will have him as a prisoner. And we will upgrade these guys to militia archer. Archer! Done. Oh, access the item pool. What? That's... That's pretty good armor. I've got 15-4, and that's 24-6. It's a little bit heavier, but... Um... We'll take anything else that's mildly expensive, and by mildly I mean really mildly. Uh, that's it, I think. Manage upgrading of companions. Um, he is a wooden stick. Let's change that. You can have a one-handed weapon, a crossbow, some bolts, and a shield. Now, there aren't those things to pick up at the moment, but he'll try and get them. Uh, apply to everyone, apply to everyone, apply to everyone. And just to make sure he doesn't just pick up all the shit, we're gonna put him on like that. I think that means he won't pick up all the cheap stuff. Uh, he got a... yeah, there we go. He got a club and he got a hat. A helm. Uh, we should actually probably equip him because I was lazy, so... Hello, Marnid. Uh, I would like to talk about your equipment. I'd like to see your equipment very well. It's here. Blue Viking tunic. You're pretty well muscled for a trader. You're not going. You're not going uh, to pop with your physique, at least, which is a good sign. Um, admittedly, you are just wielding a club, but now you have decent arm as well, like me. Return. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Done. There we go. And there we go. There is the kidnapper's hideout. Uh, I think this is a good point to call it for here. But next time, we will go and save a merchant's bra. Liberate him. And, uh, hopefully make a whole bunch of cash. I've been Edward Elysium, and this has been the first episode of the new series of Mountain Blade Warband using the Floris Mod Pack. Stay shiny!